one, right? It's interesting, you know, there's all this baiting in left-wing circles. People say, oh, you shook hands with this person, you spoke to this person, you know. Bakunin is, you know, was an associate of Karl Marx. He was involved in the International Working Men's Association, the first international. But he was wildly anti-Semitic, hated Jews with a passion, just really, really anti-Semitic. And no one ever says, oh, that Marx, he associated with, um, uh, you know, he associated with, with Bakunin. And, and all these anarchists, all these anarchists who are the kings of this, this neo-McCarthyism in the left, you know, of, oh, my God, you know, let's go after all the tankies. They all like Bakunin. And Bakunin was wildly, wildly anti-Semitic. You know, people point to Marx being anti-Semitic with his essay on the Jewish question. But Bakunin, anti-Semitism was a huge part of his identity. That guy hated Jews. And anarchists, well, they love him, right? They, they, they love him. But yet, and I wanted to get to this. You know, there is a new McCarthyism that has developed in left-wing circles. I'm not going to name names, um, but, you know, all over the Internet, there's a lot of people who think that there's some kind of, like, underground Nazi conspiracy, right? And there is a problem. White nationalists in the United States are growing, and they're bad, and they're awful, and I denounce them with every, every you know, every bone in my body. I have no love for people like that. You know, they're awful human beings. However, you know, th this belief that there's some kind of, you know, vast underground Nazi conspiracy and that, uh, you know, that, that, I mean, this is, this is really getting silly. You know, it's getting to the point that, okay, so say that you're, you're a leftist, but you are correct and not wanting a war with Syria. Well, according to some forces, you're now an Assadist. And Assad is a fascist. So you're the equivalent of Adolf Hitler. If you, you don't want, you know, if you don't support the revolution in Syria, you're the equivalent of Adolf Hitler. Or say that you, you know, whatever, you, you, you're a feminist and you buy into some of the criticisms of the transgender movement, right? Well, you for, therefore are a turf and therefore a fascist and therefore the equivalent of Adolf Hitler. Oh, or, or, or say you admire, say that you admire you know, a, a socialist government around the world that, that other leftists think is authoritarian. Well, then you're a tanky and a Nazbol and you're the equivalent of Adolf Hitler. That's the way certain leftists are talking right now. And that, that should be very, very dangerous to people. That should be very, people should be concerned about this. You know, and it's one thing to just say you're wrong, right? You're wrong on the transgender issue. You're wrong on supporting the Syrian government. You're wrong on supporting this socialist government. That's fine. But no, 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 you're the equivalent of Adolf Hitler. You're a fascist. And keep in mind that now in leftist circles, not only, you know, is, is, are fascists bad? I mean, they, they are. I mean, they've always been bad. But if you accuse somebody of, of being a fascist, it therefore becomes justified to be violent against them, right? So keep in mind, in left-wing circles, if you support an anti-imperialist government, if you have questions about the transgender issue and are, are not in line with the transgender movement, if you, you know, if you are, you know, opposing war in Syria, if you're friendly to Russia, you deserve to be violently attacked and killed. That's basically what a lot of these Antifa forces are saying, right? It's not, it's not that you're wrong. If you, if you take positions that leftists don't agree with, that certain Antifa forces don't agree with, then you deserve to be beaten up, attacked, and killed. That's what they're saying. Now, that's really, really dangerous. It's really, really dangerous. And, and you can be declared a fascist for any reason, right? And the first thing they say, oh, every fascist says they're not a fascist. So no matter how anti-fascist you are, doesn't count. Or maybe you have a history of anti-racist activism. Well, that doesn't count. That's just a cover story. Um, you know, or they, they've always got some excuse. Or, you know, and anything, right? Uh, anything. You know, if you shake hands in a certain way, or you do the okay sign, or you do this or that, well, that's all a fascist. And they got, the, they got these directories of, like, fascist hand signals. If you were at an event and you spoke to somebody, you're a fascist. You deserve to be beaten up. That's basically what these people are saying. And I, I don't think I'm the only one who realizes how dangerous this is. And the sad thing is, I mean, fascism is, is awful. It, it is. And these people are basically cheapening. You know, it's becoming a joke. They are making it into a joke, right? And, and they're, they're making it so, you know, you know, you're a fascist if you do anything that disagrees with them. And on top of that, if you, if you were to listen to some of these people's rants where it's like, how to spot a fascist? Well, you know, of course they say they're not a fascist, but have you ever noticed that, you know, if they say this, that, you know, this is a secret fascist code word or a dog whistle. If you talk that, if you listen to these people, take some of their rants and replace the word fascist with communist and you'll be hearing Joe McCarthy and the John Birch Society.
It's so ridiculous, right? You know, we all know that John F. Kennedy was a communist because he supported the civil rights movement. And that's, that's a communist conspiracy against our way of life, right? That's what the Birchers all said in the 50s. They were wrong. John F. Kennedy was not a communist, but he did something they disagreed with and they declared him that to make him a communist, right? Um, or, you know, uh, or what, what is that? You know, I mean, it, it, it's basically, you do anything that, that disagrees with them, uh, you know, and Jack Rabbit says the KKK are not fascists. I would say the KKK are fascists in the way I understand fascism. Now, this is where it all starts to get a little bit crazy. What actually is fascism, right? And there's a lot of interpretations. I did a video on this. Um, what is fascism, right? So there have been about three approaches in the communist movement that I'm aware of, right? You have like the mainstream kind of, you know, the, the, the old common turn CP parties had this line. A lot of the social Democrats have this line. They say fascism is right-wing authoritarianism, right? The Republicans, they become conservative and dictatorial and authoritarian. Then they're fascists, right? And they say that they always say the Republicans are creeping fascism or moving toward fascism, right? The fascism is just the right wing. That's, that's the standard. That, that's what you'll hear for the most part. I know, uh, Georgi Dimitrov, uh, the, the common turn, uh, uh, representative in the 1930s, he said, fascism is nothing but the rule of the most right-wing sections of the ruling class, right? Well, that's one definition. Then you've got the Trotskyite definition. Uh, you know, Trotsky wrote extensively about how he argued that fascism was a middle-class right-wing movement, a, a middle-class upsurge, a middle-class movement uh, that emerges of middle-class people that hate both the communist movement and big capital. And then he argued that Mussolini and all of them, you know, that the ruling class hijacks this right-wing movement and uses it to attack socialism when there's a crisis. That's Trotsky's argument. And then, and then, and then you have the definition the Communist International used in the early 30s of what they called like social fascism. They said anyone who wasn't a communist, if you sound like a communist, but you're not, then you're a fascist, right? There was actually, people wanted me to sing again. There was a song that the old Communist Party USA used to sing. And I learned this from someone who actually learned it when she was a small child. Uh, there was an older woman who was in the Workers' World Party. She was about 80 years old. She'd gone to a communist summer camp when she was a child. And she'd been in a Communist Party USA summer camp when she was like four or five in the early 30s. And they taught her this song in Brooklyn, New York. The cloak makers union is a no good union. It's a company union by the bosses. Those right-wing cloak makers are just socialist fakers who play upon the workers' double crosses. The Hill quits Dubinsky's and the Thomases are making the workers false promises. They preach socialism, but they practice fascism to preserve capitalism for the bosses. Right, in the early 1930s, CPUSA, Communist Party USA, they said that Norman Thomas and the Socialist Party were fascists. They said the Trotskyites were fascists. They said the IWW and the anarcho-syndicalists were fascists. If you were not in the Communist Party, you were a fascist. That, that was, that's the other definition you get. And then Mao and the Gang of Four revived it in the 1970s. In the 1970s, Mao Zedong and the Gang of Four revived that definition. And they said, well, the Soviet Union says it's socialist, but it's actually social imperialist and fascist, right? That was their line. And that was their justification for, uh, for uh, you know, aligning, for example, with Pinochet. Well, Pinochet may be a brutal dictator, but hey, he's fighting those social fascist uh, Soviet leaders in the end day that was a social fascist, right? And that social fascism line, right? And that, that was, you know, an ultra-left line. Line. But the thing is that there's a, a, a grain of truth in all three of the definitions. You got the mainstream definition that fascism is just, you know, it's just right-wingers. You got the Trotskyite definition that fascism is a middle-class mass movement. And then you've got the, the hardline, you know, definition that, that you know, if you're, a com if, you, if you're a communist, if you sound like a communist, but you're not, then you're a fascist. Well, there's an element of truth in all of that, right? Fascism is a right-wing authoritarian movement. You know, and it's hijacked by the richest of the rich, you know, in a time of crisis. That's true. Uh, fascist movements tend to be based among the middle class that has hostility to the ruling class, but also hostility to, you know, social democratic movements. There's an element of truth in the Trotsky definition. And also, you know, fascists, traditionally, they have a populist or demagogic aspect to them. Uh, you know, that they, they tend to, you know, say they're for the common man and all of that, but, but they, they really hate communists and want to kill all the communists. So you could say they sound like communists, but they're not. You know, all three of those definitions point to some truth. Um, but all three of them, in essence, are wrong. Fascism is not that complicated, right? All of that is true when you observe fascist movements, but all of that's kind of not relevant. Fascism is a mass movement of violence and terror 
to preserve capitalism. It is those who want to uh, resolve the crisis with destruction. That's what fascism is. When there is a crisis of capitalism, you'll get progressive axes that say, we need to seize control of the means of production, we need to move towards socialism, and then you'll get the destructive act axis. The destructive axis says, nope, we need to just destroy and tear things down and kill lots of people and then and go backwards, right? So when there's a crisis of society, when the old way doesn't work any longer, when the, when the ruling elite doesn't know what they're doing, when there's big problems in the economy, when there's political divisions within the ruling class, when, when society seems to be crumbling, what do you do? Leftists, socialists are constructive. They want to move forward. They want to plan the economy, develop the means of production, build a better society. Fascists want to tear things down, beat people up, kill people, you know, promote the most backward feelings among people, racial bigotry, hate, cruelty, sadism. Fascism is lynch mobs. Fascism is the Ku Klux Klan in the United States. Fascism is the, uh, is the Black Hundreds Party in Russia doing their pogroms and slaughtering whole Jewish villages. Fascism is, um, is, you know, just, it is a mobilization of violence and terror. It is mass destruction to save capitalism. Right? It's when there is a crisis in the system, fascism is those that engage in violence and mass destruction and terror in an attempt to resolve the crisis. Meanwhile, socialism is those that say, no, the way we resolve this crisis is by moving ahead, by being progressive-minded, by bringing people together, by building, by constructing, by working hard to build a better future. Fascists appeal to the worst aspects of human beings. Socialists appeal to the best aspects of human beings. Fascists want people to be backward, bigoted, hateful, violent, and destructive. Socialists want people to come together, to cooperate, to be rational, to be scientific, and to build, right? And that I would say in the United States right now, we're seeing a rise of fascism. We're seeing it on the right with these white nationalist elements and these hateful bigots the, you know, um, that just want to care, tear things down and kill people. And I would say there's even a little bit of a, a left fascist current. A lot of these primitivist forces, I will say, who don't believe in social progress and think that overpopulation is the issue and think that we just need to tear things down and go backwards and, you know, and, and engage in ultra-leftist adventurism and, and they, they wave a left-wing banner. I would say that they're somewhat fascistic also, right? And that, that, that if you want to solve the, the crisis of capitalism by tearing things down, beating things, you know, tearing things apart and moving backward, you're a fascist. And if you want to solve the crisis of capitalism by moving forward, by wanting to build a better life, by promoting science and reason and technology and development and building human solidarity and, and holding society together and caring for those in need and emphasizing human cooperation and solidarity and breaking down bigotry and having people work together to build and to construct, then you're a socialist. There you go, right? And then I think that socialism and fascism, unfortunately, at this point, uh, you know, uh, are, are, you know, I mean, we're seeing a lot of them. And, you know, the socialism stuff is good. I think a lot of Americans at this point are socialists and don't know it yet. I think there's a lot of Americans who want the government to take action to help the lives of working people. Um, basically, you know, I've been, I've been emphasizing this slogan, and I'm going to make a video of it. But, you know, this slogan that I think needs to be everywhere, everywhere in U.S. society. We need a government of action to fight for working families. I'm going to say it again. We need a government of action to fight for working families. We need a government of action to fight for working families. We need a government of action to fight for working families. We need a government of action to fight for working families. We need a government of action to fight for working families. We need a government of action to fight for working families. That's the slogan I want to get everywhere. I want the whole world to be saying that because that's the antidote to neoliberalism. Neoliberalism says, you know, it's